going since we got a little bit uh, packing up and getting everything finalized for the day. Uh, to swing by and show you the tri-corner knob shelter. So that's the shelter itself. It's got a fire ring outside. Nice overhang here, a couple of benches. Come inside a little bit and see we've got a nice fireplace built in. And then double decker uh, bunks platform. Platform for bunks or <laughs> whatever. I mean, another bench on the side here. Um, yeah, apparently these uh, fireplaces are a feature of the shelters in the Smokies. Um, yeah, you certainly don't uh, see that kind of uh, luxury in a lot of the other shelters. I know of the few that I've seen in uh, Northern Maine, you've basically got a three-walled structure and not much else. Yeah, these are these are nice, uh, nice shelters uh, for anybody hiking through. Uh, anyway, all right, let's get packed up, get our packs on, and. Uh, get back on the trail. All right, so we're about to hit the uh, wrong side. Yeah, <laughs> wrong side. There's another one right here. We're about to hit the uh, Mount Sterling Ridge Trail, about a 5.8 mile jaunt from here to there. And then uh, well, we have more trail after that, but uh, something to look forward to after just short of six miles. So it does say 5.8. <laughs> All right, 5.8, here we go. Although it is, it's not a bad thing to ask for correction because I've been getting lots of things confused. that I don't think we'll get to see, just given the time of day and uh, how loud I am, uh, would have been a black bear. We've seen uh, piles of scat here and there, some uh, fresher looking than others. You know, you see signs, you know, at all the parking areas, all the shelters, you know, that we're in bear country, yeah, which we are, I'm not, you know, and, uh, you know, make sure that you hang your food and anything with scent that might attract unwanted interest from bears or mice, any other kind of creatures, typically aren't going to be out probably this time of day. Although it's not impossible, just not likely. This trail has been nice so far. This, this is the trail that will ultimately uh, connect us to Mount Sterling or the Mount Sterling Ridge Trail. There are two different trails. There is a Mount Sterling Trail, which is not what we're looking for today. And then the Mount Sterling Trail, which is what we're looking for today. And that was five point something, 5.8 uh, a little while back. I am not sure how far we've come so far this morning. You can tell that this uh, particular trail is not as uh, well-traveled as, well, the AT for one, but that's, that's pretty much a given. But, or the uh, Chestnut Branch Trail that we started on uh, the first day. Even that had, uh, you know, pretty wide, uh, a pretty wide path. This one's almost one foot in front of the other, you know, like you're walking a tightrope, not quite, but it's uh, certainly uh, more overgrown maybe than uh, some of the others. Not in a, in a bad way, just in a not used as often kind of way.
been carrying that saw the whole trip. Haven't really had a, a need or opportunity to really create a, uh, a campfire. So eh, at least I got to put it to use that way. Next hiker that comes through this trail have a little bit uh, less of a hassle getting past that point. So some parts of the trail are not exactly wide and you can maybe see here, I don't know if camera's uh, compressing the depth too much, but uh, you know, half a foot to my left is almost a sheer drop. You know, you wouldn't enjoy the fall, I don't believe, just based on how narrow this uh, part of the part of the trail is. There have been other parts that have been like that as well, but you know, as long as you're mindful of your surroundings and pay attention, shouldn't be any worse for wear. And it does help remind you that you are in fact uh, in the mountains. Seems they've made an alternate route around that tree, which is good because I don't think my little spin saw would be able to cut through that. starting to get into some lower elevations down from those uh, 6,200 uh, feet uh, where we were, I believe. 60 something, it was above 6,000. <laughs> uh, I have to, have to make a note. Um, but you can see that the uh, rhododendrons are thicker here. We are maybe a mile, not even that, I don't think, from the, uh, the next junction. In about 0.9, we'll uh, hook up with the Mount Sterling Ridge Trail and that'll take us to our end of day destination. We'll still have a, a few miles on that. Uh, well, more than a few, but uh, anyway. All right, as you can see, we've hit the uh, next junction. So we just came down off the Balsam Mountain Trail and if uh, we were sticking to my original plan for uh, night three, we would be staying at the Laurel Gap shelter. But if we did that, that would make tomorrow unnecessarily long. So we're putting the length into today, day three, and that way it'll give us a shorter, shorter uh, final day four. Um, uh, so, Mount Sterling Ridge Trail, we've got uh, Mount Sterling Trail 5.4. So I believe that'll take us to where we are spending the night tonight, the uh, Backcountry Site 38. So we are better than halfway through the day, but we do still have 5.4 miles. So after we eat some lunch, we'll probably uh, pick up and Hand out those last 5.4. All right, so we just finished lunch. We've got uh, about three, three more miles to go until we get to Mount Sterling. Uh, today's been great, largely downhill, uh, ups and downs, minor. But uh, we do have one, or maybe two, uh, one little push, and then a little bit more down, and then one bigger push. That should take us to the top of the mountain. But again, with only three miles to go, hopefully we can get through that with 
minimal uh, headaches, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, it's a beautiful afternoon. Not too hot, not too chilly, especially once you get moving. And the uh, insects haven't been very bitey, which is always nice. You can hear flies buzzing around, but they seem mercifully disinterested in humans. So I definitely appreciate that. As you can see from the signage here, we've got 1.8 miles to campsite 38. That's where we'll be spending the night. So that means that ahead of us is probably the last big push for the day and really for the trip since day four is largely downhill. So we finally made it to campsite 38, our last uh, night out here. That last uh, 1.8 miles was punishment um, yeah, so we're getting set up. We'll have to go uh, pump water, which is farther away from this site than the shelters we were at the other two nights. Uh, we'll rest for a little bit and then swing out and get it. Yeah, last night out here. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll uh, pick up in the morning. All right, so we're at Mount Sterling. And uh, one of the neat things up here is you've got this 60-foot uh, uh, fire tower, which also looks like it's been uh, converted to a cell tower now. Um, let's see if you can see it behind me or above me. Set up, I think, in 1935. If that's wrong, I'll, I'll correct the date. Uh, it is the highest standing fire tower east of the Mississippi. And it's got this, uh, it's described as a rickety staircase, but honestly, it feels pretty good to me right now. So we'll go up and we'll get some good views of the uh, environment surrounding Mount Sterling. Mount Sterling, by the way, gets its name from uh, back when the early settlers uh, settled in this area. They found a two foot wide seam of silvery metal. And so, of course, at first they thought, hey man, silver. Well, it turned out to be lead. So somewhere around here, along our route this, uh, this trip, uh, you used to have uh, Civil War deserters would hide out in the valleys and both Union and the uh, Confederate uh, detachments would get sent out trying to find them, <laughs> trying to bring them back in. Yeah, a lot of history in this area. All right, let's go up these last few stairs. Oh, nice. Actually, there's additional height. And me being me, I'm trying to think of how can I get up there. And I think, all right, to be candid, this is probably not where they want people uh, checking out the environment. Um, we are, yes, on the roof of that, uh, uh, that little observation deck. Um, uh, we are still enclosed, as you can see, maybe. The uh, uh, roof itself doesn't look the most, uh, most safe, so I'm not gonna stay up here for too much longer. But you do get some great views of the Smokies. And it's a good time of day. I mean, the sun is not quite setting, but you start to see some of the shadows uh, on the ridges and also some from clouds. It's pretty cool up here. Yeah, let me step back over here around this hole. And put the camera through here. Get a better view, there we go. There you go. All right, well, we do still need to find water, about a 0.4 miles from the campsite. So I'm gonna get down from here and go uh, filter. Thought I'd uh, at least get a shot of what it looks like to descend these stairs. Uh, it's 
it's narrow getting through that uh, little hatchway there. All right. 